Good evening, hello and welcome to the news today, your prime time destination news, newsmakers talking points. Tonight the big story is coming in from the Bridge Bhushan Singh saga, where there is a new twist that has led to our wrestlers in tears. Among my guests who will join me is uh, Vijinder Singh. He will tell us why he's angry. Also, we will continue our debates on the new criminal law brought into parliament. Abhishek Manu Singhvi and Pinky Anand are among my guests tonight. And we have a special for you. Manipur MLA, Bunzagin Walte, will be joining me on a special, a pre xmas special with a man who symbolizes Manipur's continuing tragedy. Plenty on the show tonight, but first as always, it's time for the nine headlines at nine. Three soldiers are killed in action in Jammu and Kashmir's Rajori anti-terror operation on after two army convoys are ambushed, third major ambush in Rajori in this last one year alone. Rick Bhushan Saran Singh's close aid. Sanjay Singh gets elected to the wrestling body's top post, sparking off protests from the women wrestlers. Sakshi Malik says she's hanging up her boots, quits wrestling. Three more opposition MPs suspended. Total suspensions at 146 as parliament is adjourned. Sign a die. India block protest claims this has been a murder of democracy. The contentious CEC bill passed in the Lok Sabha in the absence of suspended opposition MPs. Government gets the final say to appoint a chief poll officer with a panel of the prime minister, union minister and leader of the opposition. Three new criminal reforms to replace colonial era laws also passed in the Lok Sabha in the absence of 46 suspended opposition MPs. Rajya Sabha adjourned sign a die. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal skips a second ED summons in the Delhi Liquor Gate probe, calls the summons illegal and politically motivated. Another big setback for the DMK Stalin Minister K. Ponmudi, sentenced to three years jail term in an illegal assets case. BJP hits out, says DMK is steeped in corruption. 87 cookie zoo victims buried in Manipur, Churachanpur district amidst tight security. Thousands pay tribute to Manipur's ethnic violence victims. Left government versus Governor Arif Khan in Kerala escalates. Khan claims Chief Minister hired goons to attack his convoy. Chief Minister accuses Governor and Congress of trying to disrupt peace. But the news that's breaking at the very top is disturbing. Three soldiers have been killed in action in Jammu and Kashmir's Rajori. Two army vehicles have been ambushed and at least three soldiers killed. Three have been injured. The incident taking place at 3.45 p.m. Uh, this afternoon. Two army vehicles were carrying troops. They were moving to the operational site when they were fired upon by terrorists. The fire was retaliated upon in the ongoing operation. Three, troop, three of the soldiers sustained fatal injuries, three non-fatal casualties. The operation is still in progress. Importantly, this is the third ambush in Rajori area in this year alone. Sunil Ji Bhatt joins me for the very latest. Sunil, tell us, give us the latest update on what's been happening. Well, Rajdeep, terrible news coming in from the border district of Rajori. Uh, the security forces had a specific input uh, that there was presence of terrorists in Deraki Gali area in Thanamandi, uh, Tehsil of uh, Rajori district. And based on that specific input, a massive search and cordon operation was launched by the security forces late last night. Uh, this evening, the security forces managed to establish contact with the terrorists and reinforcements were being sent to the operation site. Unfortunately, two of those vehicles uh, which were carrying uh, our soldiers. Uh, these two vehicles were targeted by the terrorists. They fired upon these uh, uh, two vehicles. Uh, unfortunately, we have lost three of our brave hearts uh, in this uh, anti-terror operation. Three soldiers are injured. They have been rushed to the hospital for the treatment. But Rajdeep, uh, last time also when we spoke, I told you that, uh, that there has been a change in strategy as far as Pakistan is concerned and terrorists are concerned. They are now focusing on the hilly regions of Jammu 
Rajo region. There was a time when these twin border districts of Rajori and Punch were, uh, you know, severely affected by terrorism. But because of the hard efforts of security forces, these areas became terror-free. But once again, terror is raising its ugly head in these areas. And why is Pakistan focusing on these areas? Is the reason behind is that, is that that this is a densely, you know, forested area. It's surrounded by tall mountains and right. it's a very challenging area for the security forces it becomes very challenging for security forces to carry out anti-terror operation and as per the security establish establishment there are 15 to 20 terrorists present in the twin border districts of Rajori and Punch they are hiding in the upper reaches and that is why anti-terror operations have been going on in these two districts for last two years Raj okay Sunil Bhatji with lots of details there worrying there how Rajori has become a new epicenter for terrorism in Kashmir. Let's turn from there to our top story tonight. Bridge Bhushan Saran Singh, the MP of the BJP from Gonda, and a man who has been in the eye of the scanner since the start of the year after women wrestlers, including Olympic winning wrestlers, claimed that he was responsible for sexually harassing them. Well, today there was another twist in the tale because a close aide of Bridge Bhushan Saran Singh has won the Wrestling Federation elections. Soon after, wrestler Sakshi Malik hung up her boots, announcing a dramatic retirement tearfully from wrestling. As I said, Bridge Bhushan is the man accused of sexual harassment by multiple female wrestlers. Take a look at our top story. Months of agitation against ex-WFI chief Bridge Bhushan Saran Singh and it all came down to tears for the protesting wrestlers. One of Bridge Bhushan's own men, Sanjay Kumar Singh, emerged victorious on result day, sparking celebrations in the Bridge Bhushan camp. ये फेडरेशन अपने लिए नहीं चुनी जाती है, देश के खेल को बढ़ाने के लिए चुनी जाती है, और मैं ये उम्मीद करता हूँ कि 11 महीने के अंदर जो कुश्ती का नुकसान हुआ है, खेल की गतिविधि बंद है, नई फेडरेशन तुरंत इस गतिविधि कुश्ती के गतिविधि को शुरू करें और जो नुकसान हुआ है उसका भरपाई करें और ये मेरी जीत नहीं है देश के पहलवानों की जीत है। A huge setback for the wrestlers who made allegations of corruption and sexual assault against Bridge Bhushan Charan Singh and had vehemently opposed to Singh's candidature for the president's post given his close ties with the ex-chief. If president Bridge Bhushan, like a man, like a man, he is absolutely right, he is a business partner, he will remain in this federation. So, I am going to take my own hands and I will never show you there today. What do you want to do, brother? Let's leave it. Let's leave it. While there are celebrations in one camp, the other feels hard done by. The wrestlers sought justice and they feel that it's been denied. Sports Bureau, India Today. Let me go to my first guest tonight and he is also an Olympic bronze medal winner, Vijinder Singh, boxer, who also contested as a member of, for a member of parliament, joins me now. Vijinder Di, you have seen today Sakshi Malik Ropadi. The wrestler has cried and said that he will not do wrestling. In the way that the wrestling federation has been and the British Bhushan Saran Singh has won the special man, Sanjay Singh. What do you think that you have seen the picture of Sakshi crying? As an athlete, how do you respond? As a player, it feels very bad because after a long time, it will be reached to that point as an Olympic medalist, in the Commonwealth Games, in the medalist, in the Asian Games medalist. So, all the tournaments have been played, all of them have won, 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 ओलंपिक या कुश्ती को छोड़ देगी जिस तरह से चुनाव प्रक्रिया हुई है तो आई थिंक ये बहुत गंभीर मसला है और है और आई थिंक ये कहीं न कहीं सवाल उठाता है हमारी जो लोकतांत्रिक जो जो सरकारें चलती हैं जैसे नया प्रक्रिया है उसके ऊपर बहुत सारे सवाल उठाता है ये कैसे हो गया सब चीजें तो लेकिन एक खिलाड� नहीं यही तो यही तो मुसीबत है चुनाव हुए अब ब्रिजबुशन सरन सिंह और उसके आखास आदमी चुनाव जीत गए हैं 
एथलीट्स विल हैव टू एक्सेप्ट इट क्या आपको लगता है कि हमारे फेडरेशन इसी तरह से चलते हैं कि जिसके हाथ में सत्ता है ताकत है दो नेताज विन और स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन की कोई सुनवाई तो नहीं होनी है डिस्पाइट ऑल दीज प्रोटेस्ट एंड एलिगेशन ऑफ सेक्शुअल हेरसमेंट नहीं सर बॉक्सिंग का भी देख लीजिए बॉक्सिंग का भी जो चलाते हैं स्पाइस जेट के ओनर है जय सिंह जी वो भी आपको मालूम है सर जो टेबल टेनिस है वो भी कौन चलाता है क्रिकेट का तो आप सबको मालूम ही है सर और लेकिन सर आ, आ, मैं नहीं मानता कि सब लोग बुरा चलाते हैं कई लोग अच्छा भी चलाते हैं लेकिन जब तक वो खिलाड़ियों की उनके परेशान नहीं करते तब तक सब चीजें ठीक है हमें कोई दिक्कत नहीं है किसी से कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है हमें कोई किसी से बैर नहीं है लेकिन सर दिक्कत तब आती है जब वो एक कहते कि डिक्टेक्टर की तरह बिहेव करते हैं बिकॉज दे शोइंग देयर मनी पावर दे शोइंग देयर कि भैया पॉलिटिक्स की पावर कि भैया मेरे से ऊपर कोई नहीं है मैं हूँ बिकॉज हमने हमारे टाइम भी सर uh, बहुत सारे जो बॉक्सिंग जब थे हमारे तो प्रेसिडेंट वो भी पॉलिटिशियन होते थे बट उन्होंने कभी परेशान नहीं किया कि हम तुम ये करो तुम ऐसे करो uh, उन्होंने कभी सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट या कुछ किस तरह के भी आप ये भी सुनने को नहीं दिया और फॉर एक सवाल सर मैं आपसे पूछता हूँ सर आपने तो बहुत अच्छी तरह से कवर किया है जब कांग्रेस की सरकार थी और तब इस तरह का कोई एलिगेशन किसी फेडरेशन पर लगता तो तो सरकार कैसे काम करती बिकॉज आपको मैंने बहुत करीब से देखा तो आप बताइए सर इस सवाल जवाब दीजिए नहीं नहीं विजेंद्र जी जी आप कह रहे हैं मोदी सरकार वर्सेज कांग्रेस सरकार लेकिन आपकी बात सुनकर कोई कहेगा विजेंदर तो कांग्रेस पार्टी से चुनाव लड़ा था इन ट्वेंटी यू कॉन्टेस्टेड फ्रॉम डेली अब ये कहा जा रहा है साक्षी मलिक को अब कांग्रेस लड़ा सकती है हरियाणा से तो एक तरह से ये जो लड़ाई है हैज बिकम बीजेपी बनाम कांग्रेस मोदी सरकार वर्सेस कांग्रेस राधर देन एथलीट्स वर्सेस ब्रिज भूषण सिंह क्या ये प्रोटेस्ट जो है अब पूरी तरह से राजनीतिक बन गया है और बन सक और भी बनेगा सर ये हर एक सिक्के के दो पहलू होते हैं और राजनीति आपको ही मालूम है सर हर जगह पे है कौन कहता है कि कहा नहीं है सर ये बताइए मेरे को पहले तो और नंबर वन वो कहते कि टिकट लेगी नहीं लेगी फ्यूचर का किसको मालूम सर क्या हुआ क्या पता बीजेपी चुनाव लड़ ले फिर क्या हुआ सर तो उसकी भी तो गारंटी दो ना अभी भाई कल मेरे को कहते भी मैं कांग्रेस ही हूँ कल मैं किसी दूसरी पार्टी से चुनाव लड़ दू तब उसका क्या होगा कि फिर दूसरी पार्टी दी सर ये चेंज कर रहे हैं सर जो असली मसला है खिलाड़ियों का मसला है उनको परेशान करने का मसला है उनके साथ सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट का, का मसला है उससे ध्यान भटका के आपको कांग्रेस वर्सेज उसमें कर देते सर बीजेपी में वो लग गए उसके बाद वो सब चीजें चलती रहती हैं वो कही भैया तुमने ऐसे किया था तुमने वैसे किया था लेकिन जो जो खिलाड़ियों का मसला है वो वैसा का वैसा ही है उनके साथ सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट हुआ था नहीं हुआ था वो सब चीजें कोर्ट में है लेकिन उसके बाद भी सब चुनाव हुए और दोबारा से फिर जीत जाता है तो बेचारी तंग होके उसने अपना कहते कि भैया मैंने छोड़ ही दिया अभी जो तुम्हें करना है तुम करो तो अभी वो बेचारी कहा जाएगी सर नहीं कहा जाएगी आपकी बात बिल्कुल सही है गुस्सा आता है और वो इमेजेस देखकर मुझे भी गुस्सा आता है कि एक ओलंपिक रेसलर की बात एक तरह से सुनी नहीं जाती है लेकिन बाकी खिलाड़ी कहा है आपने अपनी बात रखी वेर आर ऑल आर अदर फेमस स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन उनका साथ बहुत कम लोग दे रहे हैं क्या सरकार का डर है इसलिए लोग बोल नहीं रहे हमारे विमेन रेसलर्स के साथ नहीं 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 सर डर नहीं है डर नहीं सर बेचारी सरकारी नौकरी में है ना हरियाणा में आधे ज्यादा जितने प्लेयर हैं जितने बड़े बड़े स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन सब गवर्नमेंट जॉब में और गवर्नमेंट जॉब में सर कोई एक आवाज उठा देता ना मेरे भी कहते इशू को नोटिस हुआ था इसलिए मैं नौकरी छोड़ दी सर अब मैं जो चाहे आपसे बात कर सकता हूँ कभी भी कर सकता हूँ जो मेरे को अच्छा लगता हूँ मैं बात कर जो बुरा लगता हूँ नहीं तो आधे से ज्यादा प्लेयर सरकारी नौकरी में है सर और सबके सब जो खिलाड़ी होने के नाते कहते हैं कि जो अच्छा खिलाड़ी है उसको सब मालूम है कि इतना बड़ा लेवल ओलंपिक लेवल सर बहुत हार्डली कहते हैं नंबर्स के मेडल है हमारे हिंदुस्तान के पास और उस तरह के साथ वो कहता है कि भाई मेरे मेरे को न्याय नहीं मिला इसलिए मैं कुश्ती छोड़ रहा हूँ तो एक बहुत बड़ी बात है और दूसरे खिलाड़ी सब के सब कहते हैं सर ऑफ द रिकॉर्ड आप उनसे बात कीजिए तो आपको बता देंगे कि वो बेचारे कितने परेशान है ब्रिजभूषण सिंह जी विजेंदर एक आखिरी बात ब्रिजभूषण शरण सिंह के आदमी जैसे मैंने कहा चुनाव जीत जीत गए हैं क्या ये लड़ाई अब खत्म क्या आपको लगता है कि अभी भी इनको न्याय मिलेगा इन रेसलर्स को न्याय मिलेगा ये लड़ाई जारी रहेगी 
सर न्याय मिलना चाहिए लड़ाई तो कहते हो तो मेरा काम है सर वो पंच मारना और कहते कि वो सब चीजें करना तो लेकिन लड़ाई कहते बेचारे इनकी पहले भी किसी से नहीं थी ना ये कहते जब पहले दिन से बैठे थे तब भी ये लोग बोल रहे थे कि भैया हमें सिर्फ हमारी ये लड़ाई की हमारी सुनी जाए हमारे साथ जो सेक्सुअल हरासमेंट हुआ है दूसरी चीजें हुई है उसको हमें न्याय मिले दैट्स हमारी लड़ाई इन्होंने पहले भी कहा कोई राजनीति से प्रेरित नहीं है कोई राजनीति इसमें इन्वॉल्व नहीं है लेकिन सब चीजें वो धीरे धीरे वो सब लोगों ने कर दिया उसमें अंदर डाल जानबूझ के उसको तोड़ने के लिए और फाइनली कहते हैं कि सब चीजें यहाँ आ गई तो आई थिंक सर हम इनके साथ हैं और आगे भी रहेंगे या विजेंदर सिंह आपने हमसे बात की बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू वेरी मच आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टेल आर व्यूअर्स एज वी प्ले दो इमेज वंस अगेन ऑफ साक्षी मलिक क्राइम जस्ट थिंक अबाउट इट दिस इज एन एथलीट हुन हर लाइफ टू प्ले फॉर द कंट्री इज दिस वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू सी फ्रॉम आर एथलीट्स and i want to ask this question where is the jat mahasabha now which goes to the streets when they claim that the vice president has been mocked will they hit the streets when a woman who's done the country proud breaks into tears in this manner and what happens to the cases against bridge bhushan saran singh what's their status are these questions not to be asked think about it Let's turn from there to our next top story and it comes from the flashes on your screen at the moment because parliament has now finally passed both houses have passed the three new criminal law bills which will replace the existing penal code of the country a debate took place in the Rajya Sabha again in the absence of suspended opposition MPs and at the end the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita Bharatiya Nagrik Suraksha Sahita and Bharatiya Saksha Adhyanam have been passed listen in first होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह 18 राज्य 6 संघ राज्य सुप्रीम कोर्ट 16 हाई कोर्ट, 5 न्यायिक एकेडमीज 22 विश्वविद्यालय बयालीस संसद और 135 आईपीएस अफसरों के लगभग लगभग बयालीस सुझावों को एनालिसिस कर कर एक कानून बनाया गया है मैं नहीं मानता कोई कानून इतनी विस्तृत कंसल्टेशन की प्रक्रिया से मान्यवर इसके बाद ये जब कानून बना तब मैंने खुद एक बैठकों के अंदर बारीकी से पुराने कानून और नए कानून दोनों को पढ़ा है मान्यवर इसके बाद हमने गृह विभाग की स्टैंडिंग कमेटी को सौंपा इसी सदन से सम्मानीय सदस्य हमारे पूर्व डीजी साहब है उन्होंने बहुत अच्छा काम किया सभी सदस्यों ने जो विचार दिए जो सुझाव दिए थे मैं आज सदन को बताना चाहता हूं इसके बहत्तर प्रतिशत सुझावों को हमने स्वीकार कर लिया है नॉन पॉलिटिकल थे और सुझाव स्वीकार नहीं होते ओके सो लेट्स फोकस ऑन दीज लॉज वी आर वी बिलीव इट इज द बिगेस्ट स्टोरी ऑफ आर टाइम्स नॉट व्हाट हैपेंस टू द the mimicry is unfortunate but this is the real story of our time because this will affect millions of indians in the years ahead new criminal laws now while there are good points in the laws there are some concerns as well one particular aspect is what impact will it have on civil liberties because the police now have the power to seek 15 days custody at any time during a 60 to 90 day period before a charge sheet is filed current law allowed only 15 days custody during the first 15 days after arrest so you are expanding police powers many therefore believe there is a possibility of greater abuse because provisions related to offences of terrorism organized crime endangering the sovereignty unity and integrity of india could be misused by adding organized crime terrorist offences corruption under the new bill and not removing the laws that already exist for these offences like uapa prevention of corruption act will it lead to a greater overlap and experts say that are you really tinkering with long standing established laws to only lead to an explosion of litigation is this only a cosmetic change a name change today i'm going to hear two voices the first one is dr abhishek manu singhvi he is the senior congress mp and one of the country's leading lawyers he joins me appreciate your joining us dr singhvi in passing these three important legislations dr singhvi new criminal laws the home minister says he is ending a colonial legacy that the bharatiya nagrik suraksha sahita has indianized a colonial legacy of criminal laws do you accept that this was a much needed reform in our criminal justice system rajdeep what has been done far from being much needed is not required at all and is retrograde what a law does is what matters not rhetoric about colonial laws a colonial law may be good 
and your model law may be bad. And if the reverse is true, then the former must be amended and substituted by good law, not because it is colonial, but because you're bringing something good. This is a classic, classic case of cosmeticism at its worst. Khoda Pahar, Churya Vinayan Italy. And I will demonstrate to you immediately why what was required, first of all, very, very cosmetic, much more so than you think. What was required by your structural, of course, laws require reform. They require out of need, not done at all. What is done in many, many ways, of course, I can't cover all the examples, is retrograde. And it is really but a ego-based uh, Namkaran naming Me, exercise. No, no. Uh, you must leave your imprint on everything. You must leave your identity on everything. Doctor, no, 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 Doctor Singh, we sorry to intervene. The fact is, you're using words like retrograde. You're saying it's cosmetic. It's ego-driven. But let's turn to specifics. Forget the rhetoric. We want to focus on the law itself. Now, for a long time, Doctor Singhvi, you know that those in the criminal justice system, whether police officers, judges, lawyers, all of them have been calling for reforms. The government says this is part of the reforms and they claim that uh, police powers are actually being controlled will not be arbitrary and the laws itself are more citizen centric. Can you tell me when you say retrograde, be more specific? So Rajdeep, the devil and God both lie in the details. Let's take them one by one. Let me give you straight away three or four genuinely needed structural reforms not done. Mm -hmm. And let me then give you four or five done, which are retrograde. Now, you mentioned just now police reforms. Mm -hmm. That's one of the... So this is actually a lost opportunity because of rhetoric and namkaran and, uh, you know, ego. Police reforms have been talked about in innumerable law commission reports by three Supreme Court judgments called Prakash Singh, etc. The simple point there is separate genuinely by Chinese walls. Chinese not fashionable now, so Indian walls. The prosecution part and the investigation part. Have you done it? Mm -hmm. You lost the opportunity to do it. I have welcomed it. You have the fantastic example, of course, an extreme example of the district attorney in the US. Mm -hmm. You have the director of public prosecutions in England. We have those posts intra-department, but they are meaningless because there is no genuine separation. And that what suffers is objectivity, transparency, and impartiality. Just take an ordinary I.O. You are a journalist of very senior repute, uh, Rajdeep. You know what a poor I.O. does? He gets up in the morning. Information he goes officer. into the field and collects evidence. Obviously, he gets attached to the limited evidence he collects. By 12 o'clock, he lands up in some court to do evidence. Comes home in the afternoon, comes to the office in the afternoon, sits in his own department with some seniors to decide whether the evidence he has collected should be prosecutable or not and then files a report in the court. Now, this is completely apart from, of course, this is apart from doing his boss's bidding and, you know, doing menial tasks. Now, this is completely the antithesis of a good police department. They should have, as a first reform, not done, missed opportunity, uh, made these walls between the decision, between the collection of evidence and the decision to prosecute. Then, of course, the second one is to make it much more reformative, not punitive. You know, increase the number of compoundable offences. There are innumerable number of petty, petty offences which are not compoundable. Impersonating a public servant, some petty organised crime. I'm giving only examples because I don't have time to go into the details. But that is a reform I would have welcomed. Punishment alignment. You'll be surprised how many offences are serious, but the punishment is minor. And vice versa. Align those things, you know, for bribery, for elections, you know, how much is the punishment? One year. And because you have an agenda in the love jihad, you've made a new offense, which I'll come to on the retrograde category, of 10 years. Riots provocation is six months. Do these alignments. Of course, this part, I must end by telling you one good thing they've done on this. And the good thing is that they've brought in community service as a punishment. Mm -hmm. I welcome that. I only say there that that list where you can award community punishment instead of incarceration mm -hmm. should be increased to many, many, many more offenses. But of course, should be excluded for second, third time repeat offenders. Both these last two things have not been done. Can I, can I, you, you, you're using the word retrograde again and again, and you used it interestingly just now in the context of love jihad, which you say 
could result in 10 years. They don't explicitly use the word love jihad in these new laws, but could result in 10 years of imprisonment. Could you give me an example, similar examples of why you believe these are retrograde? What is it about the way they've been formulated that you believe are, makes them retrograde? Five, four examples, and I'll be very brief because our time is limited. And there are, these are four out of many, many more. One, there is a section 69 added or a clause 69 still be passed. Sexual intercourse by deceitful means. Humongous disproportionate 10 year punishment. Astonishingly, the parliamentary committee which reported on it has put it under the head appreciated provisions leading to uh, involving love jihad. So clearly, this is a disproportionate new offense intended for a particular agenda of the government. If you must have it, you already have rape by deceitful means. You don't have to have a separate offense with a 10-year punishment. And you know the laxity of prosecution, how you can be selective, how I can punish you and let off somebody else. Two major problems. And I, have, for the life of me, not found the method in the madness, Rajdeep. Anti-terror. You know there is a UPA, UAPA, that is an older special law. It is directed and focused against terrorism. Mm -hmm. It has the three principles on anti-terror law, which are uh, harsh, but which are used for anti-terror. Reverse presumption of innocence, bailed more stringent, and statements admissible. Now in this, you have created a separate anti-terror part of this law. The funny part is that you have let it be decided by an SP as to whether you should apply the UAPA or this law. So the SP can pick and choose. The powers under UAP are more draconian, more harsh in favor of the prosecution. You have now a parallel system and a SP chooses and worse, that SP chooses without any statutory criteria specified. I can't understand the meaning. Either you make some amendments to the UAP which exists or scrap so, yeah. UAP, it's even better and make it more humane as partly you've done in this one. But having both, some hidden agenda, some I, I can't find a reason. Exactly the same thing has happened with a slight difference in anti-organized crime. You know that all these states have this law, Kakoka, Makoka in Maharashtra, uh, you know, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan, my state, all of them have these state laws. They have similar stringent provision of reverse presumption of proof, bail, and anti-bail, I mean, more stringent on bail and admissibility of statements. Now you've gone and created again a similar code of the Mega All India IPC, now known as BNS, for an anti-organized crime law. Now again, there is no method in the madness. First, unlike the anti-terror provision, there is no provision telling you whether the prosecutor will choose the state law or this law. He would normally prefer the state law, which is more stringent. It will allow selectivity. It will not tell you whether Rajdeep should prosecute me for which reason under X and prosecute somebody else under the other law Y. There is no criteria specified, which is given in the anti-terror part of the BNS. And the worst, Rajdeep, I say it in a lighter vein, the government is of course not guilty of sedition. It cannot be. But it is guilty of betrayal. On 11th May 22, as far back as one year ago, the Supreme Court put a stay. On 24th of uh, October 23, I'm sorry, 31st of October 22, they reiterated and recorded the statement of no less than the Attorney General saying we are seriously reconsidering. Suddenly, one year later, on 24th of May 2023, the Law Commission comes up with a direct recommendation for sedition. And the government, interestingly, distances itself. Says, we don't know. This is a law commission. It's an independent body. That, of course, was uh, meant for those who eat grass. But then now, in this law, it is nothing but the same sedition law. Mr. Honorable Home Minister is wrong when he dresses it up as Desh Dro and not Raj Dro. That one, the earlier one, had life for three years. This has life for seven years. It's the same law reincarnated. And more than that, after Supreme Court assurances, what is the 
uh, what is the weight of your assurance to the Supreme Court in the future if you act like this? And one last thing on this, you know the actual practice on the ground? You are arrested in Gujarat by Assam police on sedition charges. You are a journalist in UP and you are booked up in sedition charges. And everybody give you a lecture and a sermon. Oh, if you have a good case, the law will take its own course. You will win. Not telling you that the process is the punishment. It's good enough to stay in jail for three to six months. And then, of course, you get some relief sometime. You know, Dr. Singhvi, I respect your legal acumen, which is why I allowed you to look specifically at this. But, you know, you said you started this by saying that this is a missed opportunity for the government. But the fact is, it's a missed opportunity for you as well. You could have debated this in Parliament. Instead, you're part of the group now, which are MPs, which are suspended. The disruption of Parliament has meant that the country has been denied a wider debate. You want to lead that debate. Rajdeep, Rajdeep, personally, I am anguished because on a lighter vein, I am the only male who has been aborted twice. I was the lead speaker last session on the election commission bills aborted. And this session on these three, I was opening the debate today, aborted. But ask the question, for what is this happening? For a simple statement by the Home Minister of the country or the Prime Minister of the country about a parliamentary breach. So who is showing ego? Who has a preconceived agenda that look, A, we will function from the mountaintops with ego and not budge an inch. We will not give a statement, though we will speak about it outside. B, the moment you protest about why you are not speaking, we will go to the extreme step of suspending you. C, have placards never come in parliament before? But have you had 141 suspensions ever before except one incident of 69 people for a totally different reason? Four, you are happy to go along each day and decide this in an empty parliament. You might as well not have parliament in this debate. So you have to decide who is to blame. We are not doing it joyfully. I am fully prepared to argue this today. I was going to be the lead speaker at 2 o'clock. Do you think I am very happy at missing it? But if you do Tana Shahi, dictatorship of this kind, and you expect us to come into the house and say, okay, he will not make a statement, but the house should not listen. What, what if you don't listen to us? The smallest possible request which should be given by, for the asking in the last 75 years of parliamentary history, minus 40, minus 10. And to get another side to this continuing debate on these three new criminal law provisions, I'm joined by Pinky Anand, former ASG and someone who's worked with the Modi government. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Pinky Anand. The basic charge against these three bills is that while it changes the name of the Indian Penal Code and Criminal Procedure Code, the name change suggests that you're dramatically changing the laws. In effect, actually, you've only tinkered with it. Most of the law is cut and paste. And worse still, it gives even more draconian powers to the police and the state, especially when it comes on issues like sedition and terrorism. Your take. Uh, well, you know, whenever you amend a law, whenever you bring about a new law, whenever you change the law, some allegation or the other is always made of the kind that you've just espoused. So basically, it's, it's difficult to say this. The point really of bringing a new law is that if you amend the law, it tends to have various possible contradictions, some ethos that you don't want to repeat. You want to translate the whole into an anti-colonial, not anti-colonial, but something which has lesser colonial reference or removing that element from our textbooks so that we have our own laws. So the concept of amendment, as I said, is one concept and the amendment of bringing in a new law because all said and done, there have been dramatic changes. So the dramatic changes, for example, I mean, let's take forensics, let's take IT evidence, let's take investigation with that. And I, I'm not sure about this draconian part. In any case, this is always the position in criminal law that you do need to give police powers. It's not as if you can't. Either you remove that, but that element is not possible to be removed. And what you are doing, for example, is safeguarding. So let's say electronic evidence. When you're permitting a device to take in electronic evidence or you're allowing forensics, which incidentally we need desperately by now, times have changed. We no longer have to really go around the whole way without dealing with forensics and we have constantly been arguing for forensics into the system. So you are bringing in those elements and 
possibly another way was as you say to do something else with amendment of the law but amendment of laws also has its own constraints and limitations which the new bills have sought to bypass as well as change the complexion by making it something which goes away from the colonial history you know, and then yeah. renaming of the acts which is brought into focus in fact i find some of the changes are substantively extremely desirable okay, give me one example. example give me one example pinky anand give me one example of a change that you find desirable i just said just now forensics investigation by electronic evidence outright uh, giving of bail changing the complexion of terrorism to make it not anti government but anti country uh, which i am sure there could be literally no opposition to so there's no uh, removing sedition as such from the textbook i mean in any no, case it, it hasn't removed support. sedition you see this is this is the ingenuity of these laws you haven't removed sedition you you've actually brought in sedition plus many would say actually in the new uh, definition the government will have even more sweeping powers uh, to arrest someone un under sedition with much more severe penalties similarly when it comes to police custody limits on bail expanded police custody for a duration within 60 to 90 days post arrest and limited relief in bail bail procedure so how is this going to be no i i don't know what you mean by limited procedure for example let me just share with you rajdeep when you talk about for example releasing a person who spent half his term uh, of, of the offense mm -hmm. in jail should be released on bail that is a straight away release that you have you've had time limits put down on the various trial procedures the idea has been to give speedier justice so that you can see the end of a trial mm -hmm. rather than the prolonged trials that actually carry on i mean you can you can always find fault as i said on the on the part of the police having powers in cases of sedition which is against uh, the country mm -hmm. in cases of terrorism which is against the country by in fact making it stricter to the extent of limited not stricter but limited in application in its own way and not extending across service you say that's become draconian i mean this argument doesn't seem to be that palatable at all no but you don't think that these laws will in eventually enhance discretionary powers of police what we actually needed was police reform instead the government has gone in for legal reform that too as i said according to legal scholars cosmetic because 90 to 95% is very similar to the old law you give it a new Uh, indian name doesn't make it a new law but the point is instead of withdrawing the discretionary powers of police and reforming the police this could be misused sorry, by the uh, police Ra radeep radeep i'm sorry i mean much as we all talk about uh, police reforms and limiting the powers of the police i'm afraid how do you really achieve that accepting for safeguarding so that's why i say forensic electronic evidence that by itself limits to the extent Mm -hmm. that you have it supported by evidence which is what you drastically need today we've been living on a period of circumstantial evidence or direct evidence you have forensics which will, when it is there prove it conclusively so you know this whole hogwash about saying don't give police powers police will have powers mm -hmm. that is the agency police reforms yes police reforms are required but while they are pending you can't say that the law doesn't require so you know these negative kind of arguments to say no do that first then do this this is not the manner in which things are done however what we did need into place is the acceptance of electronic evidence forensics these these actually expedite procedures into a much speedier system that we are talking about today so so when for example critics are suggesting that it will give arbitrary power to label even non violent democratic action as terrorism you already have uapa now clause 11111 uh, of the of the uh, bns ipc widens the definition many believe of terrorism and it could include even a, a non violent act or a mere expression of speech or writing so these concerns are they valid particularly being expressed by human rights activists i i'm afraid that there is a wide schism between human rights activists and terrorism i mean terrorism cannot be condoned at any cost in whichever manner it comes across and that's my clear view i don't even think that this constant criticism or critique of terrorism is an activity which i don't think deserves much defense much as human rights activists may want to do so mm -hmm. so i have my fundamentals rather clear on that point what about the erosion of privacy rights with increased authority to seize digital devices as evidence you mentioned that you believe that it is important to have uh, uh, forensics as evidence uh, there are those who believe that this could be a violation of privacy rights if my mobile phone for example is seized and used as evidence uh rajdeep again i think we have to understand the fundamentals of fundamental rights when you are having two possibly conflicting fundamental rights 
there has to be a balance between the two and the balance doesn't mean that privacy wins on all counts if it is a question of an offense if it's a question of a criminal action there is no question of the privacy being intruded that it doesn't work in that fashion privacy has to give way to concerns of a higher order for example security health uh, like covid for example it was said that you couldn't have an app which went into whether you had covid or not but you could and you should you cannot bypass these procedures for the sake of this count of privacy if somebody is going to commit an offence and the mobile phone actually has evidence of that and that is sees where is the question of privacy privacy doesn't come into play on such counts i'm afraid okay pinky anam giving us the other perspective and we will continue these debates because we believe that these are the real issues of our times that need to be debated on news today we will continue to hold those in power accountable manipur remember manipur for many it's been the story of 2023 and it's a story that's not over yesterday 87 victims of the devastating ethnic clashes that had erupted in may this year in manipur were laid to rest in a mass burial on wednesday in kuki dominated churachandpur the 87 dead bodies belonging to the kuki zo community were buried near khuga dam after being kept in morgues for 8 months the supreme court had pushed for the mass burials to take place The burial site will be named Kuki Hamar Mizo Zomi Mata Cemetery, and those burials, in a sense, reflect the growing divide that continues even till this day between Kuki and Meithai-dominated areas. And it is in that context that, with Christmas coming up in just a couple of days, I went and met someone to spend a few hours and find out just how he was. Who's that person? Take a look. Hello and welcome to this India Today special. Some five months ago, even as the ethnic violence in Manipur was simmering, I came across the story of Bungazin Valte, a three-time BJP MLA from Manipur, who was tragically beaten up and left to die on the streets of Imphal. A close aide of the Chief Minister, Valte's story, in a way, became symbolic of. the tragedy of manipur in which more than 150 people have died and several thousands have been displaced now 5 months later i have come back to meet bungazin valte and his family as they are coming together to celebrate christmas hopefully in happier times thank you very much bungazin valte for meeting me once again yeah. and your son younger son david yeah. uh I remember when I came and met you five months ago, more than five months ago. You couldn't speak. You were, you had been badly beaten up. Are you feeling better now? Is the smile slowly coming back? Be better, better for me. You're feeling better. Yeah. And you're on the road to recovery. Yeah. And you and you want to celebrate Christmas with a smile. Yeah. This you, time, my. Directly advise me yes. to bring my family members from Imphal to from Manipur to Delhi. That's why my younger brother, younger sons, and my uh, sister. So my all your entire family is coming together to celebrate Christmas with you. Yeah, uh, we've got a little Christmas tree here, and we're going to celebrate Christmas in a moment with the Valtes, but. You haven't been able to meet your constituents back home. You haven't been able to go back to uh, uh, Manipur because of of your condition. Are you still hopeful that soon you will go back in the new year yeah. to meet your constituents? I hope. I hope I can meet my people in in the, in the recent past. Recently, I'll meet them and I'll tell them what happened to. to me okay so you want to meet your constituents and tell them your story of what happened to you uh is it something that you will never presumably be able to forget right to be beaten up in the way you were by a mob in the heart of imphal mm. yeah it must have been traumatic for you sir i did say them sir sir desai yes hey you have promise you have to come to me immediately when you are free time thank you you are the next of god no no you are next of god okay you know i wa- i want to say this that uh 
they've been very kind to me and they believe that had I not told their story five months ago, perhaps the world would not have known their story. And he's, Mr. Valte has told me that when he's able to go back to Manipur, he wants me to come with him. And I certainly will, sir. Yeah. I look forward to coming with you. But David, how you run a small service center, car servicing center in Churachanpur. How difficult have the last six months been? Uh, all the economic are down. So, like, uh, uh, the small thing, like parts and all, we could not get on time. And then even all the people who are staying in Lamka, all, they all have a financial problem because of this crisis. That's why we could not run properly. But now, after seven months, uh, uh, they by it come come and then uh, the people also so things are slowly getting calmer yes, yes. I saw yesterday visuals of 87 uh, bodies being buried a mass burial in Churachanpur uh, but this the scars between cookies and methis will they be able to live together are you slowly being able to meet your methi friends I'm sure you have methi friends yes lord sir you have lots of Mete friends. Are you being able to meet them? Can you go to Imphal? No, no, sir. Not possible, sir. Not possible for you to travel from Churachanpur to Imphal? It's uh, if we go there, to, I think we will not be, we will not get back alive. There's a LOC, as you all call it, yes, between yes. the Kuki areas and the Mete areas, even yes. now. Yes, yes. And uh, so, how do you come to? How did you come to Delhi? No, through Aizol. You have to come through Aizol? Yes, yes. It's around two, 250 kilometers plus. And then we have to travel uh, three, four days because I, I'm coming with my kids. As you said, things are getting calmer. Yes. Is business slowly improving mm -hmm. or is it very difficult? No, right now at Lamka, uh, before... Lamka is, the, is, is, is your word for Churachan. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And uh, now, before like uh, two, three months back, there are lots of shutdown because of all this problem. But now, uh, only on Wednesday, it's a uh, shutdown day. So the business also is uh, growing. Slowly growing. Yes, yeah, slowly growing. And then the, all the uh, needs and daily needs, we can get it from ISOL with the help of the uh, ISOL people. Uh, Mr. Valte, how many of your, uh, you are a leading politician. Have you been able to meet or talk to some of your polit politician friends from Manipur? Yeah. Have they come to meet you Most now? Most of them who are coming here, I talk to them. They are coming to meet you? Yeah. When they are coming and I told them, we have to stay away from this problem. You want people to... You believe that the these wounds between metes and cookies, can they be healed? Can you all come together? Is it possible for metes and cookies to come together? At least, at, least, at least one day it will come together. At least one day it will come together. You are hopeful that they will come together? Yeah, I hope. Do you believe that a separate administration for the cookie areas is the only way forward? Or do you believe the way forward is for people to talk to each other, to start a dialogue? You need this to start is, a dialogue. Historic. Historic uh, separate administration before in India, before uh, before this uh, India become uh, this Manipur become Indian, it is already there. So you believe there should be a separate administration for the cookie areas? It must be there. It must be there. Have you been able to speak to the chief minister? You are very close to Chief Minister Birin Singh. No. Not been able to speak to him? No, yeah. Lots of people are sending you a lot of, lot of good wishes because people want to see Manipur, you know, once again smiling. Mm. Uh, what will you tell the people of this country as someone who has gone through so much of suffering in the last six months? What is your message? For the time being, it is not possible. It can come possible. Are you hopeful of peace? That peace will... Oh, for peace. Peace can come later on. Peace can come later on. No, no. Not now. Mm. Do, you, do you talk to your Mete friends at least on the phone no. sometimes? No, no possible. Why? 
no, we could not reach them. And then it's, uh, it's still, even uh, for me, it's still pain whenever I saw my father, uh, like a uh, six months back photo. I could not bear that. That's why I, I'm not able to talk to them. And then even them, their reality for someone may die or someone may be tortured. So it's not possible to talk to uh, each other so for the time being. But you're hopeful one day? That one day, yeah, after we, uh, our solution is completed. Uh, how are you going to celebrate? Let's talk happier things. How are you going to celebrate Christmas, uh, Mr. Valte? What is your plan? You've called all your family here. Yeah, I am planning to do here in Manipur. Do you like Christmas cake? What do you like? Yeah, Christmas cake. What is your fa How do you normally, when, when you are back in Churachanpur, how do you celebrate? We celebrate in church. Well, all I am praying for, all we are all praying for, sir, is that peace returns to Manipur. That will be the best gift this Christmas and New Year, and that you get better and you can meet all your constituents in, in your district. Thank you very much for talking to me, but I want to meet the whole family because it's Christmas time and we are going to have a bit of a Christmas celebration. This is just one of the many stories, therefore, of Manipur, the story of Mr. Bungazin Balte. He, remember, is an MLA and to that extent has been relatively privileged. But do think of the hundreds of people who even now live in relief camps, cookies and metes, who are struggling to bring their lives together. This Christmas and New Year, say a small prayer for them. Our thoughts are with the people of Manipur in the hope that the new year will bring better news and a healing touch. Thanks for watching. Namaskar.